I added a new item to the folder. It's how to number four. If we look at how to number four, this is uh, reiterating the ideas of plugins. While it's true that we're just writing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and that it usually creates just a website, we can use these common web languages to create cross-platform mobile apps via plugins. So we saw, for example, the plugin of a camera. That was very impressive last week. If you had a device, we uh, wrote some code to take a photo. It's up to us to do something with that photo. So here this reminds you that in your config XML file, in the regular design view. You can't really do it in the code view. Uh, we add plugins and such, like vibration. So we did that before. Another link over to the Apache uh, Cordova website. How to use the plugin, how to remove a plugin. We usually don't need to remove plugins, but we easily can. From Visual Studio, we would go to plugins and in our installed section, select to remove. The only reason we really want to remove these is if we're kind of trying them out and then we remove them because I, I my app actually won't use Bluetooth. I don't want to keep that plugin installed. That's going to take up memory resources and scare users with permissions. Question? Wait, when you remove them, is there any residue left? There should not be because all of these plugins are found inside of the plugins folder. So I've got a plugins folder, and so far I've got console, splash screen, and whitelist. So when I do remove the proper way, that folder should be removed, and the list of them being installed should be removed as well. That's why we want to remove it from Visual Studio, not just deleting the folder here, because that's going to leave residue. So uh, regarding permissions, uh, whenever we do any of these plugins that ask to connect to Bluetooth or camera or whatever, when a person downloads our app eventually from the App Store, it will say, this app requires these permissions. Photo, access to your camera, access to your contacts, etc. You shouldn't use any plugins that you don't need, because then the user will get scared that uh, that, that happens. Uh, this. Uh, you know, why, why is this calculator app that I'm trying to download asking for access to my contacts? Is it going to spam my contacts? Because if you allow an app to use these things, it could, behind the scenes even, without you knowing, because we've already given it the initial permission when you download. Custom plugin. We will do this one in much more depth. Um, for version 2 of our project, but I want to give it out here. Eventually we will add third-party plugins. Let's look at this. We're not really installing it yet because again it would be code that would be a little too superfluous at the moment. But uh, if we want to add a particular plugin inside of custom, right here we, we specify its location to it. Uh, here's our example. Let's go over to the web. Let's go to the internet and let's do a search for uh, Cordova Social Sharing Plugin. Cordova Social Sharing Plugin. So we have the plugins found officially uh, at the Cordova Apache website, but then there's developers all over the world that are creating more plugins. <coughs> Cordova is very, very, very popular, and people have made a cottage industry of making plugins to extend it, to be able to connect to the device features. You will often see results either saying Cordova X plugin, or you will often also see something perhaps PhoneGap results of PhoneGap. They're both basically synonymous. It's just that PhoneGap is Adobe's version of Cordova. Cordova is like the, the universal open source version that people can fork and copy and all of that. And then Adobe's version is PhoneGap with some tweaks here and there. So when you're looking up plugins, most likely you'll be fine if you see a result that says phone gap, you know, Bluetooth speaker connection plug-in. 
There's so many plugins out there to do so many things, just about everything that you want to do on mobile. I get 257,000 results. They're probably all great, but the one that I care about should be the one here by Eddie Verbruggen. This developer here has made a lot of cool PhoneGap slash Cordova plugins. And the top result in my case is going over to github.com to his account. He's, <coughs> he's plugging uh, social sharing. He's mentioning it by PhoneGap, which again is synonymous. So when you search Cordova social sharing plugin, you should get the result from Eddie Verbruggen. Go ahead and click on it. <coughs> This is some developer. He's out there, I believe, in the Netherlands, and put out this plugin for sharing to share text, a file, a URL via the native sharing widget. This will allow us later on to be able to send content to Facebook. If you scroll down, it'll be able to send something through the Messages app into Facebook, Twitter, email, etc. And this has a bunch of documentation that we'll read later and how to set it up and how to use it. But this is something further that evolves our web project from a basic web project to a mobile project. And it's compatible for with I, Android, iPhone, etc. It looks something like that. In, uh, on an iPad and an iPhone, whatever. Android, you'll get your list of apps. So we'll see later that with this, we can tap into whatever apps that the person has on their device. Well, in order for us to use this, we need to add it in Visual Studio. And notice, I don't see it listed anywhere under Core, because it's not one of the official plugins. We have to do it custom. So basically, at the very top, Where is it? Under Install, Descriptions, Installation. Here we go. Chapter 3, Installation. If we had the command prompt, we'd do that. Manually, we do this. The name of this particular plugin, Cordova Plugin Add Cordova Plugin X Social Sharing. So it's asking for here. Either we would type in the plugin's ID, which in this case would be this right here. That's the unique ID for this plugin. Or uh, via git or via local file that you have to load. So again, we don't need to install it yet, it's just going to take up space on our project, but just to see right up to the brink, uh, you know, I would say, okay, check the plugin. It doesn't install it until the next screen here. But this checks that it's the right plugin. So again, don't really need to add it yet. But this is how we would add a third-party plugin. If I have the idea that I want to be able to install a plugin that does X, and it's not part of the core, somewhere in the documentation, of that plugin, they will give you the plugin ID, and then here you type it in, you go connect, it'll tell you what it is, hopefully you've got the right one, and then you go add. We don't need to add yet. That's what this number four is saying, how to add a custom plugin. Plugins allow us to upgrade our simple websites to full featured mobile apps. The challenge is finding the right plugin and learning how to use it for our needs. And um, when we come back to this, we'll see well, how does it actually work? We're going to write JavaScript. We're going to have something like. Um, Okay, right here. We're going to have uh, window.plugins.socialsharing.share via Facebook. And this will let us send a message from our app directly into Facebook, a particular Facebook account and such, with an image attached and all of this stuff. Connect over to in Instagram and such. People often ask, 
how to, can I set up my app so that a person can log in via Facebook? You see that a lot, don't you? You have an app that says create an account or sign in with Facebook. Well, guess what? If we look up Cordova Social Login Plugin, there will be versions out there from various people. Oh, look, Eddie Verbruggen has his own version too, Dan Wilson, and so forth. Google Sign In. So here's a way to add the ability to sign in via Google, Facebook, whatever. This one needs a kind of a lot of setup because you need to create tokens and all of that stuff. But there's a plugin most likely out there for your particular need. Someone put it out there, probably for free, and uh, then you need to read how does it work. And some are more complicated than others. For example, notifications. People love that one. I want my app to send a notification every time there's something new. That one's kind of complex, complicated. But it's all out there for you to look up and integrate and so forth. And I would recommend, because a lot of these people want to contribute to the larger world of apps and such, and they might do it for the fame, but this stuff takes money and effort to create. And I really recommend if any of these developers have one of these sort of like donate buttons and such, I would think about giving them a few bucks for all of their effort. Some of them even say, you know, click here to buy me a cup of coffee. That's enough. I need that coffee to code all night. So, yeah, share the, share the love for that great app that helped you out. So uh, I think we take a lot of that for granted that there's so much great free software out there, but it's nice to give people a little bit of money for their troubles. So I think what I want to do, um, because we can have a variety of issues when we do this integration, I think I want to end at this point. I don't think 30 minutes is going to be very um, much time to integrate our app. I want to start fresh on Thursday uh, to bring in the project from last month into the project of this month. And it sort of is, to some degree, copying and pasting our code out of the other files into this file. But I'd like a good amount of time to do it and run into the issues and such. So we'll start that on, on Thursday. But before we wrap up our lecture for today, I want to get us used to looking at our error console. For a lot of us, our project worked fine. And for some of us, we had a couple of issues. I want to get used to looking at the Visual Studio error console. Mine is hidden, so if you don't see an error list tab at the very bottom, you'll be able to find it, view, error list. What's cool is that any files that you have open will be scanned, and you'll get output in the error list. So I've got some warnings that it's telling me here. Now, if I close the CSS file, for example, or the JS file, uh, the only error warning that I'm getting is my HTML file is saying your Cordova JS file is missing, which again I said, the Cordova JS file is created when you run, so I can ignore that. If you have your index.js file, that's going to pop up with some unnecessary semicolon. And if you go read the official documentation, it says you don't need a semicolon on lines. What lines is it saying? It's saying lines, in my case, 23, 27, 31. In my case, it's saying that at the end of these function definitions, you don't need that semicolon. Again, these are warnings. And usually the warning is not as bad as an error. So I know it bothers me, and I know that I don't usually put a semicolon at the end of a function because one school of thought says not to and I follow that one, so I will remove those superfluous semicolons at the end